21st anniversary of the day that we buried my brother. My brother was killed in a farm accident on July 26th. Um, so for the, probably the last week I have kind of been reflecting on him and what his life was like. And um, I wasn't thinking ahead the last time I was home, so when I had uh, sent a message to Kip to see if he needed a speaker tonight, and he said yes. I called my mom for some help, and I said, uh, what scriptures did they have? What songs did they have? Because uh, it's a time that I really don't remember a whole lot, from the time they told me that he had died until <coughs> the time that, um, well, probably for several weeks after he died, I pretty much don't remember much of it. So she looked in his book and she couldn't find um, scripture. She found the songs and Hymn of Promise was one of them that we sang. And uh, I'm beginning to think it's a uh, Tipton funeral thing because we also sang it at my dad's funeral. And um, then uh, she sent me the tape that uh, they had recorded of my brother's service. And uh, it was really kind of nice to go back and listen to what Pastor Gould had to say for the message. And uh, I had to listen to it like two, three times because Pastor Gould talked really fast. And I still am not sure which um, the first uh, psalm that he picked. Um, I still haven't figured that one out. But Hebrews 11, 1 through 6, was the scripture, or one of the scriptures. And so that's what I've chosen for tonight. And it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the world were prepared were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for with whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Um, Pastor Gould said that um, when he left our house the night of the 26th, he went home and he read this, that verse. And the next day when he came back out to our house, my dad handed him my brother's Bible that was by his bedside. And he turned and sure enough, that was marked in my brother's Bible. And he used my brother's Bible for the funeral, or the, the Bible that was by his bedside. Um, my brother was a man of faith and he had a Bible in his car and we had several others too. Um, so um, tonight I'm going to share with you a little bit about uh, my memories of Scott and kind of who he was. Uh, some of the things that I remember, and I, I did bring a couple of pictures. Um, this first picture is of my brother and I when we were like three or four or four and five, and we're on our tricycles and we are combined because it's like combine time, and my dad is out in the field combining. Combining. And uh, that was, you know, like probably one of the happier things that my brother uh, did with me. Because about that time, he also taught me how to climb a tree. And, you know, to me, I think I was probably up there about 100 feet. Um, it was probably more like six or seven. And then he climbed down out of the tree and he left me in the tree. <laughs> and 
I was crying because I couldn't figure out how to get out of the tree. And my mom is definitely afraid of heights. And so she didn't want to climb up in the tree to get me. And since it was about the time that the mailman was supposed to come, oh, I had to wait for the mailman to come and retrieve me. Um, and then there was, you know, the time that uh, I was four, he was five. Never listen to a little five-year-old brother. That's just not a good thing. Um, we had a hedge trimmer, very sharp hedge trimmer, and it had a little notch in it. And he said, here, put your finger there. So I did, and he went, and he cut my finger off. That was the last time I listened to my brother, when it was his idea. Um, then there was the time that, you know, we thought we would uh, you know, mail the cat to the mailman. <laughs> so we, um, our, our mailman always had to go to our neighbors before he came to our place. So we watched him go to our neighbors and we grabbed the cat and we stuck him in the mailbox and flipped the flag up and hid behind the hedge and we started chuckling and, and then we uh, you know, kind of uh, waited and Herb pulled up and flips the flag down, opens the mailbox and the cat jumps out to his car and goes around in his car until Herb can get his door open to let him out. And, um, we didn't get lifesavers that day. <laughs> so I had some fun times with my brother. You know, we used to shoot a lot of hoops out in our, um, uh, right out in front of our garage. Spent a lot of time in the backyard playing catch, uh, hitting the ball. You know, sometimes I'd even even hit the ball across the road and make him go retrieve it in the other side of the ditch. But um, Scott was very intelligent. Where I stumbled over the scripture that we read, he would have had no problem with it. Uh, I don't think there was a word he couldn't spell and a word that he couldn't pronounce. Um, one of the things in Pastor Gould's message was that he had challenged him during a Lenten service by giving him a very difficult chapter or verse to read out of the Old Testament, and he read it. No problem. Um, Scott was a music lover. He played the trombone. If anybody's looking for a trombone, I have one to sell. <laughs> um, he played the piano, and he loved to sing, and he had a beautiful voice. Um, he loved to make up his own songs, whether it was on the piano or to sing. Uh, in Pastor Gould's message, he said that he was pretty sure that as much as Scott loved to sing, because he was in the church choir, that he was probably mentally singing a song when he died. Now, I would have to disagree with him. Knowing Scott, he was not mentally singing it. He was singing it at the top of his lungs. There was no mentally singing about it. Uh, Scott loved sports. On at the bowling alley. Uh, he loved football. He loved basketball. Um, in fact, you know, I grew up on a farm. We had um, two, maybe three stations. And if there was a football game or a basketball game on, uh, forget it. You weren't going to watch anything else. Um, he liked fishing and hunting. Um, he loved to go fishing with my grandpa Tipton. Um, he did a lot of hunting with my dad. They hunted deer and ducks and geese and pheasants. Um, he liked to hunt rabbits. There was a time we had a friend of mine out who happened to have a pet rabbit and um, he shot a rabbit and threw it in the back of the pickup and then when we got home he threw it out for the cats and she was pretty upset over that. That was pretty normal life for a farm kid. Um, and even gophers didn't have a chance around him. Um, he loved to raise animals also. Uh, he raised pheasants for pearl pheasants, um, where pheasants were getting a little low. So I think at one time he had like a hundred, he had a little pen for them, they were baby pheasants and they grew up and then he released them. Um, he raised geese, they made a mess all over the farm. He raised chickens and he was so proud of the first egg he ever got. Uh, he raised pigs uh, just a few years before he died, and of course he raised cattle on the farm. But his love was horses, and he could go and ride a horse for miles and miles and miles. And 
fact, when they got home, I think the horse was happier to be home than he was. Uh, Scott loved people and family. Uh, he loved reunions when he could get together with people. Um, if there was a class reunion, he was there. If there was a family reunion, he was there. Um, we would have uh, picnics with neighbors, and he was always the first one that wanted to go. He was always up for a party. He thought that um, every occasion was an occasion to party. Um, he wanted to be around people. He enjoyed being around people. And he was always willing to help. <coughs> if you needed help, ask him. Um, and that's what he was doing when he died. His friend uh, Sylvan needed help mowing hay. <coughs> and he called, and my brother answered that call. He was over there, and uh, my brother also didn't have the best common sense because he was mowing the dugout, and and that's when he flipped the tractor. Um, Scott also had some challenges in life. Um, Scott had been diagnosed with OCD, and he had also been diagnosed with bipolar, and so frustrations in life came with not knowing how to deal with those diseases and with Scott. And with Scott knowing how to, not knowing how to deal with those diseases either. But he did the best he could. And that was the message that Pastor Buell, Buell really was driving home in his message was he always did the best he could. That and his faith in God and Jesus. Scott loved the Lord. Uh, Scott one time wanted to be a minister. And uh, he really annoyed me growing up because we would go to church, he would take the bulletin, and he would write notes <laughs> from the sermon. And then if I didn't get the sermon the first time around, I got to hear the sermon during uh, <laughs> Sunday dinner. <laughs> so it was really kind of annoying when he would do that. But that was like a week later. I can pray in my sleep, and I can hear the sermon during dinner. <laughs> so, the day after he died, we had to go to the funeral home and uh, plan his funeral, which was the toughest thing in the world for us to do, um, especially my parents. Um, having to decide uh, what who to choose for pallbearers? Um, who to choose for ushers? Um, what music? What scriptures? None of that mattered to me. Um, I didn't care what color his casket was. I didn't care what kind of flowers we had. I didn't care who the pallbearers were. The only thing I cared about was I wanted this poem to be on his folders. And it's a poem, I am free. And I'm going to close with it. It says, I am free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I am following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to look or play. Task left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. All these things, too, I will miss. Do not be burdened with time of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full of sacred much. Good friends, good times, a such. Perhaps my such. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it with now with a new grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. Um, the day that Scott was killed, they had taken pictures for our church directory. And his picture came in. Um, they asked him if he wanted to open it before he left to go. And he said, no, I'll see it tonight when I get home. He never seen it. But this is my brother. This was the last professional picture of it. He had taken, and uh, I miss him. I wish he was still here. 
but I know he's in a better place. And uh, it's been great to remember him. So thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you, sir. Pass this one around to you.